A ghost in Golden Gate Park that made front page news. And then we take a look at the bizarre new conspiracy. Is the band Jimmy Eat World connected to a death cult <laughs> today on Dead Rabbit Radio? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. And I'll keep it brief. It's so hot in here. So we're going to call this the 98, 98 Degrees Special. Okay, it's so hot. I actually just had to pour myself a... Hear that? That's a nice cup of Diet Sprite. Mm. Let's go ahead and get started with our first story here. Now, our first story is actually a really interesting one, because when I started it, I found out about it because of Backpackerverse. Now, I've talked about Backpackerverse before. Here's the thing. In the, par- like, in, in the paranormal conspiracy community, it's basically a big family. You have Art Bell, George Norrie. They're like the grandpas. They're the guys who are like the old timers. And then you have those two dudes who do Mysterious Universe. Those are your uncles that were kind of like college frat boys, and they finally got their stuff together and were able to find out a way to make money off of all the hijinks they pulled in college. Last podcast on the left are the nephews you buy your weed from. And if you ever ask them a question, it takes them a whole hour to answer it. And then usually they say, come back next week and we'll finish telling you the answer. But Backpacker Universe in this family of the paranormal community is your hot cousin that you always sleep with during your family reunions. Like, you know you shouldn't. You know you shouldn't be involved with Backpackerverse. You get it. She's she's hot, but she's so... Well, she's really... You're related to her, so you shouldn't do anything with her. But she's so hot. She's so dazzling. You keep getting attracted to her. But at the same time, she is dumb as a rock. That is backpack reverse in the family of the paranormal community. And this is what I mean when I say she's dazzling and enchanting. Is All of their stuff on their website is so overblown. Blood on the walls. And then the guy walked out and then the ghost jumped. And it looked like Abraham Lincoln. And he tore his face off. And it was really like Aaron Burr. Who's the guy who shot Abraham Lincoln? Anyways, anyways. The point being is that they just make stuff up. They make stuff up. But I keep coming back to them. I just like that hot cousin at the family reunion. You can't stay away. Whenever the family gets together, she's the first one you seek out. You could talk to Art Bell, but no, you see that blonde <laughs> cousin in the corner, and you just have to go up to her first. It's it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy, and I'm, I just I can't quit her. The point is, is that I... This, I found gold. So don't worry, it's just not going to be me ripping on backpacker verse for the next 15 minutes. Actually, because I read everything and then I have to research it, I found this beautiful chunk of gold inside my hot cousin. So let's go ahead and get started here officially with this story. We're going back in time. So let's hop, let's hop on board the Jason Jalopy. No, 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 no. The Dead Rabbit Dirigible. It's been a long time since we've used that guy. We're going to fly around. We're going to San Francisco. Beautiful, beautiful San Francisco. It's beautiful, beautiful because we're going back in time before the earthquake. The Jewel of California. And in San Francisco, there's a park known as Golden Gate Park. And within Golden Gate Park, there is a beautiful, placid little piece of water known as Stowe Lake. According to Backpackerverse, this is the story of the white woman of Stowe Lake. Before the earthquake, before the earthquake of 1906, a young mother was walking by the lake. And she straight up butterfingers her baby, just whoop, just slips out of her arms. The baby goes flying into the lake and drowns. And then the mom jumps into the lake as well to save her baby and drowns as well. So now, to this day... There is a statue by the lake. It's the statue of the Pioneer Women and Children statue is what it's called. And when you go to the statue, you say, don't do this. Don't say don't do this. Don't do what I'm about to tell you. Do not say this in public in San Francisco. You go out to the statue and you go, white lady, white lady, I have your baby. You say, white lady, white lady, I have your baby. Here, I'll do it one more time just for the sake of the podcast. White lady, white lady, I have your baby. And at that point, the water starts to bubble in this image of a beautiful white lady. She's dressed in white. She's dressed in white. I'm I'm not trying to... Okay. 
I, I, I'm assuming she's also Caucasian, but they call her a white lady because she's in all white. I should have said that earlier. Anyways, she bubbles up out of the water, dressed in all white, and she pops out of the water and she looks at you with wet eyes. I have no idea what that means. I don't know what that would mean as opposed to dry eyes. She looks at you and she says, Do you have my baby? Again, Backpack Reverse states, If you say that you have the child, she'll haunt you until the day you die. So you go, yeah, I have your baby. You're chuckling with your friends. Yeah, lady, I got your baby right here. For the rest of your life, every time you turn around, white lady standing behind you. Going to the bathroom, white lady. Jogging, white lady. She's losing a bunch of weight. She's jogging with you. You're doing a training montage. She's straight up lifting all these weights. No matter what you do, she'll haunt you for the rest of her life. Now... For my first question to this is, how do you know, Backpack Reverse? The second question is, if 10 people did this successfully, is she haunting 10 different people at the same time? Is she a multitasker? Can she split her form up into seven, possibly 7 billion different hauntings? Everyone has a white lady working out. Most important question of all, can you sleep with her? Because if she's following you everywhere, she's going to see you like when your heart gets broken by a girl and you're going to feel a little ghost hand on your shoulder and you look over at her and she looks over at you and... Then she looks away because she's kind of shy. And you know she's having a hard time <laughs> She's having a hard time falling in love because she already lost her child, but you're able to hold her, kind of. <laughs> you can pretend to hold her, and then one night, passionate love, ghost babies eventually, and all that stuff. But anyways, if you say, yes, I have your baby, she will haunt you for the rest of your life. Doesn't sound too fun, but it could be if you can sleep with her. So you would say, no, I don't have your ghost baby. No, lady, I don't have your ghost baby right here. And if you say you don't have the ghost baby... She drags you into the lake. So basically, you're her new ghost baby. You're, you, again, how do they know? I mean, for any any part of this legend to be true, there'd have to be an observer kind of sitting there watching, eating popcorn on a bench, and he sees some guys out, and they guys out, and then a white woman hops out, and a guy on the bench is still just eating popcorn, and then the guy gets dragged in the water, and he goes, oh, I wonder what that was about. I'm like, you would have to have an observer be able to escape these events. But anyways, Backpack Reverse told that story, and I go, that's hilarious, hot cousin. But it's 100% not true. You made it up. But it gets more interesting because they didn't. Now, like I said, Backpack Reverse has a tendency to just make stuff up completely. But it turns out this is a real legend. And then there's an actual truth behind the real legend. So the real legend, the second part is the same. The incantation, white lady, white lady, I have your baby. All that stuff is true. She haunts you until you die. Or she makes you a ghost baby, pulls you in the water. But... When you look at other sources, the beginning's a little more fleshed out. And this is how most sources report this. This is, let me back up here, not just most sources. This is from GoldenGatePark.com. This is from the park's official website run by the city. They tell the story of Stowe Lake. There was a lady who had a baby stroller. She's walking through the park. Do, 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 do. It's 1906. They didn't have music back then. So this is like the first time anyone's ever heard a tune. Everyone's like, oh my God, what's that noise? She's walking through the park. She ends up seeing, running into a friend and they're like hugging each other. Like, hey, I haven't seen you in forever. I don't know what women talk about. So then they sit down on the bench. She puts her stroller next to her and she's talking to her friend. And she's so engrossed in talking to her friend, she doesn't realize that the baby stroller begins to roll down a hill. Because, see, San Francisco is famous for a lot of things. But I think if, if you ask most people what San Francisco is famous for, okay, you'd get them a hundred different answers. But eventually you would get to the answer, there's a lot of hills. So she puts her baby stroller down, she's talking to her friend, and the stroller begins to silently roll down the hill. I won't make a sound effect because it's silently. And then it splashes into the water silently as well. She doesn't hear the splash. And after she's done talking to her friend, she's like, oh yeah, I forgot. I was impregnated for nine months and gave birth to a... Ah, and the baby's gone now. And she begins walking around the park asking people, have you seen my baby? Have you seen my baby? Have you seen my baby? And people are like, no, I haven't seen your baby. Is she cute? And they're like, I don't have time for that. So then she goes on the next person, have you seen my baby? Eventually... She checks the whole park. It's nighttime now. She hasn't found her baby yet. And then she goes, duh, it, it's in the water, dude. Like that, she finally thinks, like, think about it. I was sitting on a bench by a hill. The stroller's gone too. It's most likely my baby went into the water. The wo This is the official story on the Golden Gate Park website. After four hours of searching, she finally realizes it must be in the water. She then jumps into the water to find the baby. And she drowns. Now, unless her baby was Aquaman... After three minutes of quote-unquote missing underwater, the, the kid's dead. I mean, it's dark, but anyways, she jumps into the water, and then the official website from the city goes on to say, 
if you go out to the statue and say her name three times, and then you do that to the statue, and then the ghost will come out, and all that stuff's going on. So, obviously, Backpacker version shouldn't make this up. This is a very well-known legend in this part of the city, and due to the internet now all over the world. So, where does this legend come from? In 1906, there was the massive earthquake that basically shook uh, San Francisco to its knees. Does that make sense? Shook, shook. It was an earthquake. A bunch of buildings fell down. A bunch of buildings caught on fire. And it was a horrible tragedy. But before 1906, San Francisco still was, uh, like all major cities, had their dark side. And so previous to the earthquake, and especially around the 1900s, especially in, like in the year 1900, suicides were very, very common in the park. Here's a quote from a newspaper that was printed back in 1900 that did as it was actually the San Francisco Call did a newspaper article called The Park Suicides. And they had this quote in their article, the park with its luxury of trees, shrubbery and green grass seems to appeal strongly to the troubled philosopher who seeks to rid himself of what he deems a burden. Very poetic. I wish journalists were at like that today. And I got to say this. You've probably noticed something different about today's episode, both on YouTube and on the podcast. I'm using different art for today's episode. That image you're looking at was the image in that issue of the newspaper. It was an illustration that was in the newspaper. And it looks like some gothic kit. It looks great. It looks like basically a metal album. And I wish that newspapers did stuff like that today. I guess when you couldn't put photos in your newspaper, you had to get real imaginative. But maybe they had photos back then. I don't know. But the point is, it's like, ooh. A plus for that. So you have that image, and the article was called The Park Suicides. I love that image. But the article goes on that at the time, one in every 12 suicides in the city of San Francisco happened in that park. And there was just a ton of them. People shooting themselves, drownings, hangings, things like that. It was a very, very peaceful place to die. But you ask, did anyone drown? Did any woman purposely drown herself in the lake? Now, I was reading an article about this that really delved into the history of all this stuff. And they said... There may have been, but when the earthquake hit in 1906, so many public records got destroyed. So if there were police cases about a girl, a little baby falling in the lake, or a woman jumping in the lake after her kid or anything like that, that police file would have been destroyed in the fires that ravaged the city. But that might not have been the origin. The, The origin may have actually happened past the year 1900. We may be more recent than we think. In 1906, July 10th, 1906, this is shortly after the earthquake, there are two 12-year-old girls that are living in the park. They're refugees from the earthquake because everything was destroyed. So these two girls are living by themselves in the park. They run, they're run, <laughs> running through the park. They find a cop. They're like, Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer, come here. We found something in the lake. And the officer's like, okay, tell me what's going on, little ladies. And they go... This is gross, but they go, we found a, a little naked baby floating in the lake, sir. A little naked babies floating down the lake. They kind of trail off like that, and the cop's like, oh, that's disturbing. So he goes, blows his whistle to alert his fellow cops. He's running through the, running through the uh, park, and he goes, no baby. No baby in the water. And they actually taught in the news article, regard because that was reported in the news, there was a news article talking about that, and they said they had plans to dredge the lake. The police took the sighting incredibly seriously, and they were going to just net put a net under the lake and lift it all up and try to find this baby. And there was no follow-up report to this. So we don't know if they never found the baby. So could that child have been related to the story? Like, could you have started to have the legend start because there was that sighting? But that's not even enough to really start the story of Stow Lake. 1908, January 6th. There's a car flying at top speed. It's 1908, so it would have been like 20 miles an hour. Driven by a man known as Arthur Pigeon. Going through the park. It's Arthur Pigeon driving, and the car is full of a bunch of chicks going like, ah, screaming. And a police officer on a horse sees his car go by. And he puts his siren on the horse, starts galloping after the car. Now, it's 1908. Like I said, the cars can't go that fast. (laughs) The horse catches up to the car, blows his whistle, pulls the car over. And everyone is flipping out. And the cop is like, what's going on, dude? And Arthur Pigeon's like, okay, officer, we didn't, we're not drinking nothing. Well, we did drink a little bit ago, but we're not drunk now. We were driving through the park. You know, I'm just hanging out with these hot chicks, you know, looking for a good time. No suicides tonight. And the officer's like, good, we've already had enough of those. And Arthur Pigeon's like, yeah. We're driving through the park, and we see 
in the darkness. The image of a woman dressed all in white just appear on the road. And she held her hands up in front of us as if to stop our car. I didn't. I floored it, dude. I wasn't going to mess with this thing. And the next thing you know, we drive by you and you pull us over. Now, the cop thought the story was really funny. The cop's like, hey, listen, let's go and check out the ghost. And there, Arthur's like, there's no way we're going back there. The women were flipping out still. The word hysteria was used several times in the article. And so the cop says, listen, man, you're speeding through the park. You either go back with me to see if we can find this ghost or I, I'm gonna, you're going to get in trouble for speeding. So Arthur Pigeon goes back, leaves the girls there. No ghost at all. And the chief of police, though, this, this was actually filed as a police report. Sorry, the captain of the police at the time, the captain of the park station, said that he was informed of the affair and he gave orders that any ghost answering this description is to be arrested on site. So everyone's like, oh, 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 those idiots. That story involving Arthur Pigeon was front page of the San Francisco Chronicle in 1908. Slow news day indeed. What's interesting about this story is that I think that there may I, I think that there may be a bit of truth to it. I don't believe in the ritual part of it. I think that I don't believe if you go out there and say white lady, white lady, I have your baby. I don't believe in any stuff like that. What I think is fascinating is the story is interesting in and of itself. Where you have a park that was basically the soil is fertilized with the bodies of suicide victims. You have people huddling in the darkness of this park after one of the biggest natural disasters in American history. You have, today, rapes and murders and all sorts of horrible stuff going on in that park. You have a confirmed ghost sighting with multiple witnesses. I think it's very, very likely that there's something there. And But to to add the whole ritual story to it, to add that side to it, almost makes it more childish. But I would bet, I would bet if you journeyed into the darkness of Golden Gate Park, you may stumble across something there. No chance needed. The place just seems to almost devour humans, devour hope. A lot of people took their own lives in Golden Gate Park. And one of those spirits may try to take yours. Outdo that backpacker verse. Let's go ahead and move on to our next story. So for our next story, it's actually a really short one. And it's something that Nine times out of ten, I simply would have brushed off as creepypasta, as a troll, or as a lunatic, or maybe all three combined. On the paranormal board of 4chan, about a week or two ago, somebody posted a little image from the music video The Middle from the band Jimmy Eat World. And it's gone now. The post is gone. I think someone who has more internet savvy skills than I do could probably pull it up, but I can't. So... The post, is, the post is gone as far as I can tell. I looked all over for it. But this is what it said. Everyone who was in this video is dead. Now, to clarify, it's everyone other than the band. See, we can verify the band members. But everyone who was in this video is dead. They either died in a car accident, drug overdose, they were murdered, they've gone missing. And it, it alleged that this was some sort of cult or conspiracy surrounding the band Jimmy Eat World. Satanic sacrifice, something like that. Now, the video itself, for this is for the song The Middle. I don't know if I said that already. The video itself is basically the band playing at a house party and everyone in the house party is in their underwear. It's, it's a pretty good video. I gotta admit, it's a pretty good video. But we can't verify that. So I remember reading that post and I thought, well, you know, that's a pretty easy conspiracy theory to just put out because I can't track down 100 people. Most people can't track down 100 people. Again, remember the formula to a good conspiracy theory I've talked about. Time, distance, and something we don't normally trust. This definitely has time and distance. The video was shot 18 years ago. It came out in 2001. Distance, because I have no idea where the video was shot. I would have to know where the video was shot and when the video was shot and try to track down. And and, and distance, because these 100 people have now scattered into the winds. This guy makes a statement, and he can't back it up, obviously. He, he kind of makes vague statements saying, you know, well, you, the, who knows who did this, but all I know is that these people were all killed. None of them are alive anymore. It was this horrible thing. Now, and again, it has been 18 years since that video came out, and the video probably had about 100 people in it. So I'm going to assume, sadly, that there are a, a handful of them that have passed away. In 18 years, out of a group of 100 people, you're going to have a few people who've passed away. 
It's even possible that because of some sort of statistical anomaly, more than average out of a group of 100 people at random would pass away. But the, the idea that they're all dead is um, most likely not true. Again, I don't have a way to verify it. But people make insane statements all the time on the internet, and if I spent my entire time trying to verify every insane statement, then, we, then I would not never get anything done. But what makes this throwaway conspiracy theory really weird are the responses to it. So at first you get a couple people. Now the thread was only around for maybe a few days, and I, that may be overestimating it. It was not around for long. It wasn't super active. Because at 4chan, the, every time you post to it, it gets to the top of the board. So if people stop posting, it gets farther down. So people stop reading it, and it goes farther down, farther down, and then it disappears. So people first were like, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> like, people were calling him on it and saying, like, that's not true. And the original posters kind of being like, no, no, it's true. It's true. Did you know? Did you know that? And this was going on for a while. And then someone jumps on and they go, hey, dude, I was in that video, man. So uh, I'm still alive. And you think 4chan is a website, an international website. It's one of the biggest websites on the planet. It is possible that somebody from the video was on this website at this time. It's it, it's out of 100 people who are in the music video, and let's say 150 just for argument's sake, out of 150 people who are in this music video, somebody finding that post at that time to comment, it's not impossible. It's not impossible at all. I was in that video, bro. I'm still alive. Now we have two people making statements that can't be verified. One, that everyone's dead, and the other one, that this person was in the music video. So then people start asking the person who was in the video, show us proof, show us a timestamp of where you're at. And there, he, that person was said, no, that's stupid. I'm not going to show my face on this website. And then a bunch of people came from the music video and said, hey, I was in that music video too. Hey, yeah, you know, I was in that music video too. Yeah, yeah, I was in that music video too. And they start talking about stuff in the music video itself. Like, oh yeah, I remember when we were shooting this, I met so-and-so and da 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 and he had a bunch of people talking. Now we're getting into really statistically improbable stuff. Where you have a video of 150 people in it. 100, whatever it was. All finding this website at the same time. Commenting. Most likely answer is that everyone was making it up. The person making up the conspiracy theory was lying. And then everyone else who's saying they were part of the video was lying as well. But what was really odd, if memory serves me right, because I read through this thread... And then continued, then moved on, was reading other stuff. And by the time I got back to it, the thread was no longer available. What was interesting about it was, let's assume that everyone's making everything up. The people who were saying they were in the video, as far as I can remember, they weren't interacting with each other. Each person who was saying they were in the video almost seemed like they were in the video independently of the other people, if that makes sense. So it wasn't like someone would say, I was in the music video, and then someone else goes, oh yeah, I was in the music video. Hey, let me test to make sure you were really in the music video. What was the name of the guy who ran the snack table? And the other guy's like, yo, Tony, dude, Tony, dude. You know what I mean? They basically said, no, I was in that music video too. I'm still alive. And then someone else would pop in and be like, hey, no, I was in that music video too. Me and my friend showed up. We made a hundred bucks and I'm still alive. And so are all of my friends. We had all these independent people saying that they were in the music video themselves, but they weren't networking with each other. Which, if it was a troll, I would think they would all be teaming up against this original poster, the guy who came up with the conspiracy theory. Because they're all now making fun of him. What it seemed like to me, and and a couple other people pointed it out in in the thread as well. Where are all these people from, Jimmy? Where are all these people coming from? And one guy goes, well, you know, my buddy was on this thread and he hit me up because he knew I was in the music video. So he sent me an email and I'm here and it's just crazy. But it's weird that all these people from this video shot 18 years ago show back up into this thread. Again, most likely all of it is fake. It could have been pre-planned from the beginning. But again, I think that they would have been interacting with each other if the trolls tend to do that. And the general sense of the thread started to become, what's going on here? Why are all these people showing up? And then the thread just disappears into the ether. If one of you guys can find it, that'd be great. Hit me up. You can hit me up at deadrabbitradio.gmail.com. But 
If you can find this thread, let me know. It's just bizarre. Now, I now let me step back for a second. Now, I'm not saying my conspiracy theory is not that Jimmy World is part of a death cult. I don't believe they are. My conspiracy theory is this. By making a statement like that, either caused a lot of trolls to come out of the woodwork and thought it'd be fun to make fun of this guy with this delusional belief. However, there seem to be there seems to be a concentrated effort to make people not think that at all. Does that make sense? Like Somebody makes a bizarre statement probably once every five seconds on the internet. That's a fact. You can quote me on that statistic. I researched that. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. But people make stupid statements all the time on the internet that never, ever, ever get disputed. But somebody makes a comment about a video, an 18-year-old video, that is just not even that intriguing. It's just kind of a weird statement. And out of the woodwork, people say, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. And in your little reptile brain in our head, in our basic little baby brain in our head, it triggers something and goes, well, hmm, if everyone's telling me it's not true, there must be something behind this. I think that is the first, I think that's the thing that conspiracy theorists need to defeat in their head. But it, there is like this instinctual thing when somebody makes a statement and then a bunch of people just appear out of nowhere and goes, you're wrong. I think there is a mechanism in our brain that makes it... We would have never thought about that statement in the first place. But once it causes any sort of controversy, then we start looking at it a little closer to see, well, if it's not true, why are you def- why are you against it so vigorously? Like, don't look up at the sky, but I'm telling you, it's not yellow. It'd be like, That's going to make you look up at the sky. Now, if, they, if someone just walked up to you and said, you know, the sky's yellow, right? You'd be like, you're an idiot. But if that, if then 10 people started yelling out the windows, no, it's not, but don't look, but it's not yellow, you're going to look. That's the Jimmy World death cult conspiracy. Are they connected to a death cult? Most, I would say no, they're not. Just based on logic and a fine working on how death cults work, they tend not to make music videos and then show all their victims in the video and then kill them off one by one for 18 years. I, there's no precedent for that, at least. Some conspiracy theories are too stupid to exist on their own. They're simply stated by someone, and then they just disappear. But when people start arguing against them, it does make you give them a second look. The Jimmy Eat World death cult conspiracy could be shallow and vague and a joke. Or it could be the deepest conspiracy theory we've ever covered. So deep that it had to be argued with until the thread was deleted to disappear forever. Does that mean that Jimmy Eat World will now come after Dead Rabbit Radio? Does that mean that everyone involved in this episode will be dead in 18 years? Most likely not. But, I'll tell you this, I'm not going to any house parties in my underwear anytime soon. That's a lie. I'm coming to your house tonight. Okay, that was a weird ending. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be your email address. You can also... That wasn't a threat, by the way. That was not a legal threat. Don't try to get a restraining order on me. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio. Twitter is at DeadRabbitRadio. DeadRabbitRadio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day. But I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. <laughs>